here uh, where uh, the passage uh, highlights a woman. Uh, it's usually from most of those, those biblical women are in the Old Testament. You know, you, they, you hear a, a lot in the Old Testament about women, and, and they're mentioned in the, in the New Testament uh, somewhat, uh, primarily uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and a lot of sermons been preached on her. But this morning, I'd like to, to preach a message on Mary called Magdalene. Mary called Magdalene, and we're going to use our, our text in, in Luke chapter 8, verses 2 and 3, I believe it is. Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll read uh, verse 1 as well, rather than just jumping into verse 2. Uh, it says, And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had, uh, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, Magdalene, out of whom seven went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others which ministered unto him out of their substance. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you've allowed us to be here. and We thank you for some of the, the examples that you've given us in the Bible. of Some of these men, some of these women that, that uh, of old, that we can look at their, their walk and look at their faith. And even look at their mistakes sometimes and uh, use those things that your spirit would teach us. How we should live, how we should uh, uh, walk. And, uh, but primarily, let our focus always be on Jesus. We understand that, that none of these people, uh, their stories would not matter if it was not for Jesus. And we thank you for him. We thank you for not only the Savior who died, but the Savior who rose and lives forever. We um, ask that the gospel would come through in the preaching this morning. And we uh, ask that you would give us wisdom, give us guidance, give us the words to say that we might not only be a blessing to others, but most importantly, that we would bring glory to your name. Uh, forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our failures. Forgive us of our inadequacies. And, and, and enable us to be used by you at this time. Give me the words to say that you might be pleased with what is done, what is said, and what is thought here this morning. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Mary called Magdalene. Now, um, you would think the way that, that you, we, you, you hear it said, uh, the, the way people talk, uh, even in popular culture, uh, that Mary of Magdalene, there must be a lot in the Bible about Mary of Magdalene. There is actually very little found about her. And as I said in my prayer, uh, as I, and I said earlier, that uh, the important thing about this woman is her relationship to Christ. Without Christ, she would have been just another woman that, that uh, we've never heard of. It. But uh, as a matter of fact, the reason why we hear a lot about her mostly is because some of the things that we've heard about her, most of what you've heard about Mary, most of, uh, of what's been said about Mary, what most of what is, uh, is being propagated about Mary never happened or cannot be substantiated by the Bible. So there's just a, a, a little bit about her, and we're going to address some of those things, but we want to point out Jesus Christ in our preaching. Probably many of the things that, we've, that we think about Mary, we think because we've heard it said. Let's look at this morning the lies about Mary. The lies about Mary. There are more lies than there are facts about Mary of Magdalene. We've got just a, a few. As a matter of fact, a, a lot of the verses that, that we uh, have in the Bible are just repeat accounts found in each of the Gospels uh, revolving around the morning 
when they discovered the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we do have a couple of accounts here in, in Luke chapter 8. Uh, I believe maybe Matthew also um, shares this account that seven demons or devils were cast out of her. But there were lies preached about her. Now, many of you probably have heard that Mary Magdalene had been a prostitute prior to Jesus Christ uh, and her encounter with him. Have any of you heard that? Uh, one of you knocked your, nods your head. The other's uh, maybe nodding, but it's because you're asleep. Uh, but that is a, a common thinking. You know where that came from? Like most of the untruths in the Bible, or at least many of them, that was propagated by the Catholic Church. Um, in the third century, Pope Gregory preached a sermon in which he came to the conclusion that she was a prostitute, that she had been a prostitute. He said these seven devils actually represented seven vices. Um, and by the way, the, I believe it's the current pope has recently come, come out and corrected that false teaching that there, was, there is no evidence that Mary was actually a prostitute. But he said that they, they represented seven vices that a, a, a woman such as that would have. Um, he confused Mary Magdalene with Mary of Bethany where Mary of Bethany broke the alabaster box of the expensive ointment and he said that would have been used in a prostitute's profession he confused her with the woman or claimed that she was the woman that was caught in the act of adultery basically he was very loose with the scriptures very loose with his understanding and probably because he did not perhaps know the scriptures very well himself but that's where all of that began it was one sermon in the third century, and since the Pope said it, it had to be true, right? Because he was the, uh, 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 the, the authority, and his word superseded to the Catholics the word of God. Many times, many of the things that we believe is because of our own traditions, our own thoughts, because uh, uh, we place value on our thoughts. We need to place value on the Word of God. We need to understand that the Word of God is most important. Philosophies will fail you. Feelings will fail you. But the Word of God never fails. There has been teaching that she was the wife of Jesus. Have any of you heard of that? That she was the wife of Jesus. Now that was, was, uh, came from a heretical book that was written centuries later. The gospel, or at least discovered centuries later, probably written. The, uh, the gospel, as a matter of fact, there's all these books out there that are heresies. Uh, the gospel of Thomas. There's one, the gospel of Judas. Uh, which claims that Judas and Jesus were in collusion and that was all their plan all together. Uh, so many falsehoods, so many attacks on the word of God. These aren't just recent attacks. These are attacks because the devil was a liar from the beginning. The very first time that man was ever tempted, it was because the father of lies lied to Adam and Eve in the garden but what happened? They chose to believe the lie of the devil rather than the word of God. Today, people still choose to believe the devil's lies rather than the word of God. So there was a book, the gospel of, the, of Jesus' wife. There's actually a book called the gospel of Mary Magdalene. Now, all these books were written because Christianity had become popular and people wrote these books, but this false theory was uh, made more famous by a recent book and, or, and books, I guess, and series of movies based on the series The Da Vinci Code. Now, I've never seen The Da Vinci Code. I wouldn't waste my time on The Da Vinci Code. From my understanding, though, that was the premise of the, the movie that this reporter had found out this great truth about Jesus and Mary Magdalene and after his 
uh, I don't know if it was after his resurrection or they even denied his death, but they got married and they actually had children and they lived in secrecy after that. That is garbage. That is garbage. You mean to tell me that the 12 disciples died for a lie that they, that, that, that they continued to preach and they went to their deaths and they were tortured and they were suffered and all those people in the, the uh, early Lord's Church gave up their lives to promote a lie when Jesus was actually living, married, and had a family. That is crazy. But people will believe. And, and, and I remember when that movie came out and, and people were offended by that movie because of the lies that they were telling about Jesus. And uh, Ron Howard, the producer or director, said, I don't know why people are getting so upset. It's just a story. It is not just a story. And I thought, what if someone made up a story about someone he cared about? Someone he loved and, and, and propagated terrible things about them that were completely false. Would he think it was just a story? The devil was a liar from the beginning. These things all come from faulty, they, they, they come from faulty conclusions, poor biblical exegesis. A desire to discredit the Bible and the Lord. A desire to uh, be sens sensational. <laughs> Preachers today will skirt the truth in a desire to be sensational. Uh, I am reading a, a, a little book right now and it's taking me a while to read it. And, and a lot of the things I'm just like, I, I really am not buying into. But I'm hoping I'm gleaning enough because this uh, the premise of this book is to make... Um, make you a better preacher and uh, I do want to be a better preacher I, I do want to better uh, uh, share the gospel but there is a desire to be sensational and when it comes down to a choice to, to tell the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth or to stimulate people with sensationalism it seems like the, the, the thing that men like to do and women like to do, as women are standing in the pulpits nowadays, is say something sensational just to keep your interest in, and to get you excited. But people are getting excited over lies because men love the darkness rather than light. They, they, they love the, 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 the false rather than the truth. And a lot of times it's just a desire to make money. It's a desire to make money. If I write something new, if I write something controversial, people will buy my book. People will come to my seminars. There are lots of lies about Mary Magdalene. But we want to know the truth. We came here desiring to hear the truth. Once again, I, I, I can't, cannot reiterate this enough. Mary was a woman, just like anyone else. We are not here today to glorify any person other than Jesus Christ. Amen. It was her relationship with Christ that we want to look to. The life of Mary Magdalene. Where she came from. Now there is a town, 89... 35 miles from Jerusalem that was called Migdal. Migdal. Today it's called Migdal. It was in Galilee. And they say, well, she must have been from Migdal. That's why they called her Mary of Magdalene. Or Mary Magdalene. It could very well be, and I think that's probably true. But it says she was called Magdalene. She was called Magdalene. Now, by the way, before I move on to that, if you know your scriptures, if you know your, your, your Bible, you understand that the Galileans were looked down upon. 
they had a reputation almost among the Jews as the Samaritans. Many immigrants moved in and came in to Galilee. And although it was in Israel, although it was in proximity to Jerusalem, there was intermarriage. And they were looked down, they were looked upon as rabble rousers. They were looked at, and a lot of the, uh, the revolts came out of Ga uh, Galilee. The Pharisees made this comment in John chapter 7, verse 15. It says, No prophet ariseth out of Galilee. Nazareth was in Galilee. What was said? Can anything good come out of Galilee? In Luke chapter 13, let's, let's look over there real quick. Luke chapter 13. It says, There were at present at this season some of some that told of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered them and said, Answered them, Suppose ye that the Galileans were worse, were sinners above all Galileans, because they suffered such things? Nay, or I tell you, nay, but except ye repent ye shall all likewise perish. The Galileans did not have a good reputation among the Jews. That this was a person who loved Jesus. And Jesus loved that person. Cast seven devils out of her. But Magdalene, Magdala, also means tower. It is possible that was a name, like Peter was given the name Peter, which meant a stone. Jesus gave his disciples sometimes nicknames, other names that represented their character. So yes, perhaps she was from Magdala, but they were perhaps describing her as well as a tower. Someone who was strong, someone one, uh, uh, when some, a king built a tower, you remember the, the parable about the king building a tower. They would have had to have wealth. A tower was known as a thing of beauty. In the Song of Solomon, the woman said that her neck was as a tower. So we get something of the character as well, her strength, her wealth, and her beauty. This woman was a woman, apparently of some means. We will see here in just a little bit. But what the scripture does say about her was she was a woman out of whom seven demons were cast out. Seven devils were cast out. Can you imagine? Now, people think that demon possession is either something that is a thing of fiction or a thing that was a problem in the past. People are possessed and oppressed by demons this very day. And you'll, you, you'll, you'll notice that it seems when you read the scriptures, That in the time of Jesus, now this is this is my own personal feeling. In the time of Jesus, seemed that, that a lot of that was going on, wasn't it? That uh, Jesus went around and people were possessed by demons, and and uh, he cast out demons. The disciples were casting out demons. Why do we see the activity that we see today? All the things are going on. Perhaps. Many of you heard of the uh, woman who was abandoning her child, six-year-old boy in the park. And when he went to grab the car because he didn't want to be abandoned, he didn't want his mom to leave him, she drugged him, and he died. And her and her boyfriend disposed of the body, trying to despise. Well, 
Why is there so much of this stuff going on? I believe it's because the Lord is coming back. Amen. We saw all this stuff back in the day of Jesus because the Lord came. The scriptures say about the beast that the devil sent the beast with wrath because he knew his days were short. I believe that demonic activity is increasing nowadays because the devil knows just as we should know the time is short so we hear the lies about Mary we, we know just a little bit of the life about Mary called Magdalene but what about the love of Mary Magdalene now it is said that she loved Jesus more than all the rest I love Squire Parsons like to sing the Squire Parsons songs. And uh, he's got one called She Found Jesus Alive. And it says in that song, she loved Jesus more than all the rest. Probably you've heard probably that, that said about her. That was another statement that was made in one of these false books. One of these books that were not really part of the Bible. But yet we can see, the little that we can see, we see that she had a great love for Jesus. When everyone else had departed, when Christ was crucified and he was buried, it was her that was still at the tomb. It was her that was weeping when the body was gone. So this may have been found in some book that was not biblical, but we see in her life she had a great love for Jesus Christ. So rather than ju just look at what songwriters said about her, what some other books said about her, let's find out what the Bible says about the biblical evidence. It says here in our text that we read that she and some of these other women ministered unto him with their substance. In other words, she took the money that she had and she supported the ministry. And she supported Jesus Christ. It's funny how people will claim that they love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Or they'll even claim that they love his church. And yet they got deep pockets and short arms. They got alligator arms. There was a commercial a while back where an alligator was sitting in, and probably maybe you've been at, the, at dinner with somebody when the check came. This alligator just could not reach down and grab his wallet. It was so far. You know, um, you say you love Jesus, and put your money where your mouth is. You will support financially the work of Jesus Christ. You will get involved. Now, she followed Jesus around. That means that she was not just a Sabbath day Christian. Today we would have Sunday morning Christians. We understand that after the birth of, after the death of Christ, they celebrated the day of his resurrection, resurrection rather than the sixth, seventh day, which was the Jewish Sabbath. But she su supported him with uh, her finances. She supported him with her faithfulness. Every gospel that you read now. You know, we, we know that Matthew and Mark and Luke, they're called the, the synoptic gospels because they share pretty much the same stories from different viewpoints maybe, but the same stories. And then John shares some things, includes some things that are not in the other gospels. And perhaps some of the things that the other gospels shared, John did not include those. And we understand that was all from the direction of the Holy Spirit. And probably also from the timing where John wrote his, his, his gospel. But every single gospel account tells us that Mary, called Magdalene, was at the cross. When other disciples had fled, had hid, had denied Christ, Mary was standing there with Mary, his mother. She was not only faithful in the good times, she was faithful 
when Christ was offered up. We are coming to a time, and I probably shared this recently. We're coming to a time where it's an unpopular thing to be a follower of Jesus Christ. There is a current thing going out called the can uh, cancel culture. Or anything that is not liberal is being taken off the internet. Taken off the social media. Uh, people that, that own businesses that were have been conservative or their, their owners or CEOs have been conservative. They're being boycotted. It is not a popular thing to be a follower of Christ. That's when we'll find who is faithful. What I was going to say is, seems like maybe a couple of weekends ago, a friend of mine who is not a follower of Jesus Christ, by the way, guy that I went to school with, texted me and said, you know, what are you going to do when the governor of Kentucky or the government says you can no longer meet in your churches? And I thought about that and I said, you know, and, I, and my reply was, that's when the gospel is going to thrive. That's when the true believers, the true followers will stick. And, and, and all these uh, ones that claim to love Jesus. And excuses, excuses have always been. In Jesus' day, they were making excuses why they couldn't follow him. And people will justify the fact that they are not going to follow Christ. Or they're not going to be a, a, an open believer. Nicodemus was a believer in Christ, but he did it secretly. There are many that claim to be believers, though. And, and eventually it got to the point where Nicodemus had to come out in the open and declare his faith. But many of those that are on the borderline, many of those that, that uh, um, are false professors will fall away at that time. She was faithful. We see her undying support once again. She was not only at the cross, she was at the tomb. Let's look at John chapter 20. This gives us probably the most in-depth account of Mary of Magdalene. John chapter 20. And we read about her in Jesus. In the first 18 verses. The first day of the week come Mary Magdalene early. When it was dark. <laughs> you imagine she got It was still dark and she got up early. She went under the sepulcher. And seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. And she runneth and she cometh to Simon Peter and the other disciple, which we understand is John, the writer of this book, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple came to the sepulcher and they both ran together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher and stooping down and looking in he saw the linen clothes lying yet went he not in but cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lie and the napkin which is about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which 
came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again into their own home, but Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seen and seeth two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because thou hast taken, they have taken my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said thus, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, just, uh, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, sir if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus saith unto her, Mary. And she turned herself, and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my father, and to your father, and to my God, and your God. But Mary Magdalene came and told or Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things under her. We see the loyalty of Mary. Getting up early, seeking to be a blessing. We we know from the gospel accounts that she and some other women had come wanting to anoint the body of Jesus. Not knowing that the stone was already rolled away. That, that, uh, and someone said a long time ago, the stone wasn't rolled away so Christ could get out. It was rolled away so we could see in. What a blessing that empty tomb was. What a, a blessing it was to, to, to know that they looked into the tomb and where his body lay, there was no body there. What a blessing it was to see that napkin that had been covering his head was laid off to the side, which is the custom that said, I'll be back. When you got up to eat and you laid your napkin off to the side, that was a signal to the servers. You were planning on coming back. What a blessing. We see her ministry. She cared about the Lord. She cared about the little things. She cared that, that here he was, his, his body was laying in the tomb. She, she wanted to see that it was treated properly. That her love went beyond his death. But we see her master. She referred to him as Rabboni, which meant master. You know, she was blinded by her grief, perhaps. She was blinded by, by her own uh, uh, thoughts of what had happened. She, she could not get it through her head that he had risen yet. And, and she kept thinking they had taken his body. So many times we, are, we are, are, are blinded by the things that we think. And we don't see the truth. But when she heard the voice of Jesus, that made all the difference. That made all the difference. She had seen with her eyes the events that had happened. But she heard his voice and knew him. How can, can, can people hear the gospel of Jesus Christ? Hear the evidence. There'll be a lot of this season as we're getting close to the Resurrection Sunday. There will be a lot of sermons preached on the evidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I preached it on more than one occasion. There are books out there. There are movies out there that, that prove uh, um, uh, um, what, what's the word that they use? The, the, the uh, CSI? Forensically. Prove forensically 
that Christ rose from the grave. All the evidence proves, the eyewitnesses prove, and they will hear that message, and that message will be preached. And yet, till they hear his voice, and he calls them by name, they will not believe. Then they will respond, Master, Master. Men want to be their own master. They want to be the captains of their own destiny. But what a blessing it is to find out that I have a greater master than me. And as much as I love myself, Christ loved me more. Amen. You know, I, I, many times we think about how Christ loved us more than anyone else loves us. More, more than my mother, more than my father, more than my wife, more than anybody in my family. Christ loved me. But Christ loves me even more than I love myself. Amen. He is my master. And I say that with great joy. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What was her message? Jesus said, tell them, I've risen again. That's our message today. That we serve a risen Savior. And, and our message is, as the songwriter said, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. He didn't just go back to heaven. He has sent his spirit and he dwells on this earth. And he dwells in believers. Our message is Jesus Christ and Christ alone can save you. Amen. It's funny. These disciples, especially the eleven, had heard Jesus preach and teach. They had read the scriptures. And she comes with this message in Luke 24, 11. It says that they, that her words seemed to idle tales to them. And they believed not. <clears throat> Our message won't always be believed. Even those that have grown up in the Lord's churches may not believe. Even those that have heard the Gospels preached time and time again may not believe. But what was the difference? Christ appeared to them. Christ appeared to them. Our job is to preach the gospel. Our, our job is to tell them that, that Jesus came and died for his people. He died for those that he loved. He was buried and rose again. We are to preach that. We are to preach that to the glory of God. And when Christ appears to them, when he speaks to them by name, he makes those words that we have preached. He makes, makes those effectual. What a blessing. Mary uh, uh, Magdalene was a woman. Flesh and blood. Just like you and I, she had her faults. She had her good points. She had a life before Christ. A hopeless, empty life. Though the scripture doesn't actually say this word that, that we hear often, she loved Jesus more than all the rest. Why do you think that was? I think the story shows how much she loved him. He cast seven deep devils out of her. Many of us good people who have never had issues like that, never had problems like that, never seen ourselves as gross sinners. You know, Peter's, Peter's question was, you know, we've left everything for you, Lord. 
What's in it for us? She just followed him. Jesus said that those that were forgiven the most will love the most. I want you to understand you were forgiven just as much as Mary Magdalene. You were just as hellbound as any child of disobedience. We should love him like she did. We should show our loyalty like she did. We should be willing to follow, willing to give anything just as she was. Because we too have a risen Savior. Would you stand?